I'm Katie and I am part of the CCIR staff. And yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, I just wanted to firstly, congratulations on, uh, have you finished your research project now? Um, yeah, yeah, I've currently uh, submitted for publishing and we're gonna hear back from the journals in a couple of weeks. Nice, yeah, congratulations. Um, I guess in, for this call, we just wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about the work that you did um, and yeah, things like that. So just to start off, would you be able to just let me know um, what course you took, what professor you, which professor you studied with, and um, also uh, what, yeah, what your research topic was? So the course I took was um, uh, from particle physics to cosmology. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, essentially what they started out uh, doing is telling us about the very small uh, quantum world and they branched out into uh, its effects on say something like cosmology and, and uh, that. And my professor was Dr. Federico Nova. Uh, right. So he's a, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, the, what was the other, other one you asked, sorry? What was uh, the, the sort of research project you did in the end? Uh, yeah, so my research project um, was uh, about cosmic rays, uh, concerned cosmic rays. It was um, about si simulating cosmic rays in the presence of the Earth's magnetic field. So uh, what I did is I coded up um, uh, basically a charged particle entering the Earth's magnetic field, uh, which was approximated to be a dipole, and mm -hmm. um, then uh, discussed uh, it, the interaction uh, of which, yeah. Very cool. And um, where are you uh, located and stuff like that? Like, are you in high school now? Um, and oh, yeah. Where are you in? I am in grade 11. So in that's year 12. And I am currently uh, going to West Island School uh, in Hong Kong. Oh, very nice. Nice. <clears throat> very cool. Um, cool. Thank you so much for all of that detail. And I just wanted to hear a little bit on um, just like what your thoughts were on the course that you took and then also the research project. Um, were there anything, was there anything that was like extra interesting to you? Uh, and yeah, just your general thoughts on everything. Yeah, so the project, uh, I mean, the, the course I took actually gave me a really good chance to learn something that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So um, though uh, we didn't go into say the maths that someone in a university degree would go into, it did deal with some some content that would have been taught in college, so I wouldn't have gotten a chance to know that uh, had I just you know stuck to say my high school curriculum. So that was quite a quite enjoyable. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess that's that's maybe one aspect of it. Cool. And what would be like the high school equivalent um, of the course that you took? Uh, yeah, are you um, in like an IB program and things like that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm in the IB program. Okay. So what would be the course that would be like closest, most closely related to, to that? I think we do cover, um, say, something like quantum mechanics in IB, uh, mm -hmm. but the, the level of depth that, say, some, uh, the, you know, Mr. No Dr. Noah went into compared to, say, what I would learn in school is, is quite different. Okay, cool. And um, how did you even become interested in this um, in the first place? Uh, like, why did you want to do the CCIR program? Uh, yeah, so I actually heard of the program through my school, and um, oh. it originally wanted to write a research paper. So mm -hmm. I heard of all these places, Pioneers, uh, uh, CCIR Cambridge, and I kind of, um, and this other Horizon one. But anyways, so I kind of, uh, I kind of chose CCIR because it looked the most, the most interesting. There was a professor from Cambridge or from, you know, a university like that, and they, they published it beforehand. So yeah, I guess, and that too, of course, the school recommended it. So it seemed like the right decision. Okay, so I'm hearing that it was like a school recommendation and also the fact that you got to work with a professor at CCIR that kind of set the program apart. And after, I guess now that you finished the program, like, um, are you happy that you made that decision and was were those things basically true in the end? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Uh, cool. I feel like I learned a lot from the, from the course and I feel like I, I can take away a lot, especially when I go to university. So I have, a, I have an idea of what to expect. Mm, and, and I cool. definitely, yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, nothing. Sorry. 
Okay. I also wanted to ask you about the your experience doing research. Um, I assume, given that you're in grade 11, like, was this the first time you conducted, like, a research project, like, of this extent? Yeah, yeah. So, high school research is really different from, from college research. Uh, yeah. So, one thing I guess that's maybe a little different might be the audience you're writing to. So, mm -hmm. in high school, it's expected that you're writing to maybe other high school students or someone of that level. But, mm -hmm. um, uh, compared to say uh, a research paper, you're you're first you go into a lot more depth compared to say high school, and um, the the audience is more more of an academic uh, oriented. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, did you feel like guided and stuff through this process of learning how to also do research by your professor and TA? Yeah, yeah, they were really really helpful. Okay, that's good. Um, what would you say was your favorite element of like the research, like the research part of it? I guess maybe, maybe coding it up. Uh, cause the thing is, is that, um, obviously I'm, I'm the kind of guy who likes to go on to, um, FET and, um, you know, experiment with the little sort of simulations they have. So the fact that I was able to create one was really nice. Okay. That's very cool. Um, what ended up being something very interesting that you discovered from your research? I guess, yeah, there is something interesting. Um, so what happened is, is that, um, of course, since I was simulating um, the uh, cosmic rays in the Earth's magnetic field, um, mm -hmm. I expected either to get something like a deflection or, or the cosmic ray hits the Earth. And what actually happened is, and I was just putting in numbers, uh, I, found the I found one do something very strange and it would go um, oscillate around the Earth. Um, uh, you know, and and I, I did some more research, I did some digging, uh, and actually, as it turns out, what I had just what I had just shown was a mm -hmm. cosmic ray becoming trapped in the Earth's magnetic field, which is which is actually what happens in the Van Allen belts. Mm -hmm. And I asked my professor about this, and he confirmed it. And it's actually uh, that thing that leads to the aurora borealis. So, mm -hmm. so on, you know, I guess a bit serendipitously, I kind of stumbled upon uh, the the origin of something like the aurora borealis in my simulation, which I didn't expect at all. That's very cool. So it kind of shows that like. I guess in some ways, like everything is connected in the end. Yeah, um, yeah. That's very cool. And uh, I guess, yeah, it have, have, have your perspectives on the topic or anything um, that you've researched sort of changed since doing this research project? Um, yeah, so uh, we covered quite a large depth of, of topics in the, in the program. And mm -hmm. one of the things is that the professor was talking about um, and though I had read a little bit about it before, I wasn't 100% familiar with it. it. It was the topic of the Feynman integral path, uh, path integral uh, formulation. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, is it's this idea that um, if you have, say, uh, a, a, a particle, a quantum, you know, any quantum particle, um, is that um, this uh, particle would say um, the, the um, chance of it getting or the probability that it, that it is found in a certain point uh, is actually equal to the um, sum of all the probabilities of, of all the possible paths the particle could take, and so that seemed a little that seemed mind mind boggling to me. Mm -hmm. So so you know you maybe you might have heard of the double slit experiment. So that's this idea that the wave function goes through the two slits, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it behaves as if it goes through the two slits, and the particle behaves as if it goes through the two slits. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, um, it was Richard Feynman who discovered this. Uh, um, this idea and it, and it goes something like this so if we have instead of having two slits we have three slits then the electron or any particle will behave as if it goes through the three slits and same with four slits and five slits and if you have an infinite number of slits then that essentially just approximates free space and so the chance of an electron going from say this point to that point the probability that it that is found in that point would be equal to the sum of all of those probabilities which is which is different from classical mechanics so I think they, they were able to verify this using something, the electron unite dipole moment. Um, and uh, what that is, is it's, is it's basically moments is like in physics, you have, you have torque. Um, and, and we can measure um, the dipole moment of an electron. Uh, and if you, if you take this into account, um, what you will find is that compared to classical mechanics, where I think the number of that, of that moment should just be two. In, mm -hmm. in uh, qu quantum mechanics, quantum molecular dynamics, that number is actually um, something like two point something, something, right? And, and we've measured it so accurately um, that we know that this theory is correct, which is, which is interesting. 
That is very interesting. Uh, yeah. And how many people were in your course, actually? Was it a future scholar program? Yeah, it was. There was, um, uh, I think three, there were three other people in my course. Okay. How was it having, yeah, how was it having other students? I'm sure it was cool because they were from different places and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one was from Turkey, another from the U.S., and one from India, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere yeah. then. Yeah. Nice. Um, cool. So I also wanted to ask you a little bit on um, just the, well, we talked about the research process a little bit. I'm just looking at some notes here. Oh yeah, the, the aspect of like the mentorship of the program. So that's something that we really um, pride ourselves for, like the fact that you get to work with a professor from Cambridge, um, but also with a TA, obviously. Uh, and that we, it's more of, yeah, we really like the, like to develop the relationship between the students and the professor. And I just wanted to hear a little bit on like, kind of like how your experience was um, doing your project. Yeah, I'd say uh, my my mentor, uh, Dr. Nova, was probably, well, he knew a lot about his subject. He was very, very, uh, you know, well-spoken, very clever. And uh, he was also really friendly. So that was that was nice. So I came in a little intimidated, maybe like, what if, you know, I, I get put on the spot or something, but that didn't happen at all. And mm -hmm. also, and actually I found myself joining in a lot more, uh, you know. Uh, he's also He was also incredibly helpful throughout the program. Uh, I definitely don't think I would have been able to uh, write the kind of research paper I did without him or his help. And, and same with the TA session. Yeah, she, uh, my t uh, the TA was a, Kuba a person named Kubali, uh, and she she taught me all my skills about MATLAB. So uh, really helpful. Amazing. That's so good to hear. And what was it like taking such a niche or like specific course? Uh, because I know that that's something we talked about this a little bit already, but it isn't something that you typically would do in in high school. So, yeah, how was that for you? I guess maybe the reason I chose this course uh, was because uh, I think compared to the other options, um, mm -hmm. like you had, I think one was about cryptography and quantum computing. So I was generally interested in this aspect, say physics, and the other two was about cryptography. And one about, I think, quantum computing. And so I kind of thought out of all of them, the most sort of uh, one that would give me the most kind of uh, broad, um, or at least the one that interested me the most was this, was this course. Um, another, another thing, what was it like taking this niche course? Um, so yeah, it was, it was quite interesting to see, to, to go that depth into something, uh, like I said earlier, that you wouldn't be able to in high school. Definitely. And I know you still have some time left in, in high school, right? Because you're just, uh, you're grade 11 now. Um, how, how do you feel that this um, experience with CCIR has impacted like what you maybe are planning for the future or um, what you thought you wanted to do and then now you maybe you have a different plan? Like, yeah, just speak to that a little bit. So I knew I wanted to do physics when I went to university. But mm -hmm. now I'm definitely quite sure that maybe something closer to something, you know, particle physics is, is what I want to pursue. So that's, it definitely got me interested in that subject, yeah. That's very cool, cool. And um, if someone were to ask you about uh, joining the CCIR program or doing a project with us, um, especially for, I guess, a high school student around your age, what would you say to them? Definitely do it, yeah. It'd, it'd be really fun. You learn quite a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have any regrets. So I think I'd, I'd recommend them to do it. Nice. And uh, you mentioned that, uh, what, was it, what, what, were you, what did you say was the next steps for your paper that you had worked on? Yeah. So I finished writing it and I've got, uh, you know, approval and everything. And I've submitted it, I've shortlisted and submitted it to a few journals. And so nice. now I'm just waiting for them to get back to us. Mm -hmm. either with um, feedback, like things we might change, or with an acceptance or rejection. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Is there any timelines on that? Um, I, I heard from them they'd come back in two, two weeks or something. So, okay, cool. So you're yeah. like doing it at the moment or yeah. waiting? Yeah. Waiting, okay. yeah. That's really exciting. That's so cool. Um, I'm sure either way, like um, whatever the results are, 
um, it'll be like a very great experience anyway. And I'm sure this will be the first of many papers that you will send to journals and publish and things like that. So yeah, it's very cool. Um, yeah, thank you so much for chatting to me and congratulations again. Um, I can't wait to hear um, of the results. I will make sure I speak to the other team members once we hear about your um, about the journals and stuff for you and just make sure that they let me know what the results are because I'm super curious now. Um, but yeah, that's all from my side. Is there anything that you want to touch on? Anything else? Oh, no, no, not really. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for your time. And um, yeah, I really appreciate it also for switching it very last minute. Um, yeah, it's been so nice to chat to you and best of luck. <laughs> Thanks. Likewise, it's been really nice to chat with you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Bye. Have a good day.